I drew a, an Oryx tag, what they call an off-range Oryx tag. And this is right behind, really right behind my house. Used to come out here and see them all the time back when I ran coyotes and, and they seem to be a little more scattered, not scattered. There seemed to be more of them back then. You could just drive up on them. But since they've been hunting them real hard, you can't just drive up on them anymore. So you got you to gotta glass, and this country's pretty hard to glass. From what I understand, about 9, 30, 10 o'clock, they'll bed down to avoid the heat. But they don't have to drink water very often. I forget, you know, it's like five or six days in the summertime, and it might be a month in the wintertime. But once you find them, I think they're fairly easy to hunt. I think they're fairly easy to get within shooting range of. It is some of the best meat I've ever ate in my life. I mean, it, it, it's just really, really good. So I've been putting in every year to try to draw a tag. I drew an Oryx tag. I drew an elk tag archery in a really good unit, unit 15. And I drew uh, archery deer with my grandson and my nephew this year. This is July 12th. Today's the 12th, I believe. So I'll be videoing all that. And I'll share it. It won't be hound stuff, but it'll be hunting stuff and mule stuff. So hopefully it'll be interesting. Can you hear that crackling from the Highline wires? Sounds terrible. I don't like it. Let me go somewhere else. I don't like those Highline wires. Yeah, I think this is a good spot right here. It's kind of hard to get to in this pickup. I probably need to ride, drive my buggy. Pack a cooler full of ice. Two coolers probably full of ice. Because again, it's going to get over 100 degrees. You probably got about two and a half or three hours, probably maybe three hours to get out of here with it. It's an Oryx track. It's less than two days old. I know that because that's when the little rain came in here. I seen a bunch of uh, oryx tracks going down the road and then crossing and going back up to that that hill. I think a guy can kill an oryx with his old 30-30. But anyway, I'm gonna climb up there and glass. I can glass out quite a ways down through there. Just see, it's getting late. I've been out all morning. This is really the second day of hunting. So I've had one day of scouting and one day of hunting. something's going on but they're not quite sure they just don't I don't know what their habits are but they just don't take off and run they just kind of trot away look back trot away look back
two of them went out. I seen them. If I would have had the 308, I could have got one easy. I just didn't feel comfortable with this 30 or with this 3030. There's still one in here somewhere. I'm gonna go back that way and look, and then circle back around and come out towards the truck. It's getting real hot. Tracks all over in here. Maybe trying to shoot one with the 3030 is biting off a little more than I could chew right now. At 200 yards with the 3030, I have a hard time. Yeah, that was funner than I thought it would be. <laughs> it's still not hound hunting, but I'll try not to waste the tag. Got a better gun now. I think they went right over this hill. I don't know, I bet they bedded down for the day. If they bed down in that old thick brushy stuff like right over there, we'll never get close enough. I won't ever see them. I'll sit up here and I'll glass a little bit. They must be on one of these brush piles bedded down. I haven't seen any tracks coming through here either, so they probably turned up. I'll circle around back through this brush pile and just see. It could be anywhere. Miles and miles and miles. Wind's blowing the right direction. Look at it. It's blowing back towards us. I got a cameraman today. Nice. He's professional. <laughs> that helps. Hi. I think Ooh. you got him. You got him. Yeah, he's 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 he's, he's on the ground now. Let him sit. You heard it that maybe hear that. Oh. Look, okay, he's still he running. Out. Kind of keep an eye on where he's going. No, he's going to go down right there. He's still looking back, ain't he? Is that him standing there? I think so. Just watch where he goes. Well, I hit him, and I hit him hard, but I hit him too far back. And I'd always heard how tough these animals were. And, uh, I mean, it, they are. I mean, because when I hit him, he went down. He got up, he went about 50 or 60 yards, boom, and he went down again. Took us a little while, but we found a blood trail, and we started trailing. One of the problems we had was... This was about, I think we started trailing probably about 8.30 or 9 o'clock in the morning. And uh, it started getting really, really hot. Oh, he laid down for a minute or something. He's not, he's over this hill somewhere. Right there, he went up through here. He was leaving a lot of blood, so I, I know he wasn't going to live. And, I mean, it, 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 was a, it was a hard hit with that and I was shooting a 308 and uh, so we just had to stay on him and we walked and we walked and we walked and when we were in the sandy part it was real easy to trail him when we got to the to the grass and the brushy part we would lose the track and we'd spend a lot of time looking for it and find a little spot of blood sometimes just a little blood on the brush where he had he had, he had rubbed up against it and uh, I kept thinking man this this animal is right out in front of us somewhere so I kept looking up and looking up thinking, and I told Joey, I said, keep your eyes out in front of us because we're going to bump on, bump him. And uh, finally we lost the track completely. I think he laid up in there for a minute. Yeah, that's what we heard a bit. He's not too far in front of us. No. It'd be nice to have a mule right now. <laughs> we circled around and came back and got on the little bitty road. And when we got on the road... I found his track. Where he went underneath the fence, there was a little hill in the distance. We thought, well, we can get on that little hill and, and glass pretty good. And sure enough, we got up to that little hill, and when we did, I seen him. He was standing broadside out there with his head and his shoulder and everything in a mesquite bush and just his hind end sticking out. Well, I didn't want to make another bad shot, and I just couldn't get a clean view of his vital area. So 
I kept moving around trying to sneak in to get to the good to get a good spot and I bumped him and when I did there he went he took off and we were low on water it's already 100 degrees out there and I told Joey I said I'm gonna take tie my neckerchief on right here onto this mesquite bush this is the last place we have blood this is where we stopped how many miles do you think we trailed him probably trailed him three miles go get the buggy and it's like 250 degrees out here 